In season one of Prison Break, structural engineer Michael Schofield purposely gets himself imprisoned at Fox River State Penitentiary so that he can help his older brother Lincoln Burroughs break out. Lincoln has been framed for the murder of Vice President Caroline Reynolds' brother Stedman and is now fast approaching the planned date of his execution. Michael has extensively planned his prison break, including tattooing a massive coated blueprint of the prison across his entire body. Other elements of Michael's plan include faking diabetes with the help of a fellow prisoner named C-Note in order to gain regular access to the prison's infirmary. Michael also forms an uneasy alliance with imprisoned mob boss John Abruzzi, who runs the prison's job crew, which is necessary for Michael to have access to locations and tools vital to his plan. Other members of the prison break team include elderly inmate Charles Westmoreland, revealed to be the infamous criminal D.B. Cooper, Michael's loyal cellmate Fernando Sucre, and the young and newly incarcerated tweener, who the aggressive captain of the prison's correctional officers Brad Bellick forces into spying on Michael. When sadistic murderer T-Bag discovers the prison break plan, he forces and threatens his way onto the team. During Michael's stay at Fox River, he befriends the prison warden Pope and develops a complicated and forbidden romance with prison doctor Sarah Tancredi. Unfortunately, his highly planned out prison break suffers many setbacks. When part of his blueprint tattoo is burned off, Michael is forced to seek out a psychotic prisoner from the asylum ward named Haywire to help him remember the now missing piece. And tensions amongst the escape team begin to run high, as all of the members resent Teabag joining them. Abruzzi tries to take matters into his own hands to rid the team of Teabag's threat, but Teabag gets the upper hand, slicing the mob boss's throat. Abruzzi survives the attack and shockingly makes peace with Teabag, calling them even and hoping to set aside their differences in the name of successfully escaping. Outside the prison, Lincoln Burroughs' ex-girlfriend Veronica Donovan teams up with Lincoln's teenage son LJ and lawyer Nick Saverin to uncover the truth behind Stedman's death and clear Lincoln's name. Working on orders from the vice president and a powerful mysterious agency known as The Company, Secret Service agents Paul Kellerman and Daniel Hale begin hunting Veronica's group to ensure they never uncover the truth. The agents kill LJ's mother and stepfather, framing the teenager as a murderer just like his father. When Hale begins having regrets over his actions, he reveals to Veronica that Stedman is actually alive before Kellerman murders him as well. Veronica eventually discovers that Saverin has actually been blackmailed by a bruzy to spy on her to use as leverage against Michael and Lincoln should he need it. When Saverin decides to remain loyal to Veronica, a bruzy's thugs murder him. As Veronica gets closer to finding Stedman and uncovering the truth behind his fake assassination, Vice President Reynolds assassinates the president and stages it as a heart attack, making her the new president of the United States. Lincoln eventually discovers that his father Aldo had previously worked for the company, but gone rogue to take them down. In an effort to draw Aldo out of hiding, the company framed Lincoln for murder. As the season comes to a close, Michael's team enact their plan. After Sarah discovers the escape attempt, she has the locks of the prison infirmary changed, ruining Michael's plan. He begs her to leave the door unlocked, and her romantic feelings for him lead to her complying. When Bellick discovers the escape plan, Westmoreland subdues him but is mortally wounded in the process. During the escape, the psychotic Haywire forces his way onto the team, which now includes Michael, Lincoln, Abruzzi, Westmoreland, Sucre, C-Note, Tweener, and T-Bag. As the group makes their escape over the prison walls, Westmoreland realizes he is dying and chooses to stay behind, but not before revealing to Michael the location of his secret $5 million stash. Outside the prison, the team ditch Haywire and Michael forces Tweener to go his own way, as he had previously snitched to Bellick and therefore couldn't be trusted. The others race toward an airstrip where Bruzy's mob will have a plane waiting for them. Realizing he had no more leverage over the group and that a Bruzy would almost certainly now kill him, Teabag handcuffs himself to Michael to ensure he is brought along. But this plan doesn't work as a Bruzy chops off Teabag's hand and the others abandon him. Unfortunately, as the escape APs reach the airfield, the plane is forced to leave without them to avoid the approaching police. As the season comes to a close, Michael and his team are forced to flee on foot as the police hunt them down. 
You know, when Michael Schofield got that full body tattoo, I'm sure he needed to prepare his body with a smooth and affordable razor that could be shipped right to his door. Luckily, that's where this video's sponsor, Harry's, comes in. Harry's makes excellent quality razors right in their factory in Germany, which they've run for over 100 years. So you know they know what they're doing, and they're offering their products at a factory direct price. They're the perfect balance of quality and affordability, but it's not just money that you'll be saving. You can save time and spare yourself the hassle of running to the store to buy new razors, because Harry ships straight to your front door. And don't worry, they've also got their own shaving gel to help your skin. I truly love Harry's products. Their shaving gel and and razors are my go-to products for cleaning up my facial hair, and my wife loves them too. She says she gets a smoother shave from Harry's than any other razor she's ever tried. So click the link in the description to get a Harry's trial set for just $5. It's got a razor, a travel cover, and shaving gel, all incredible products, and a $13 value for just $5. I truly can't recommend Harry's enough, so do yourself a favor and order your trial set today. It also helps support this channel and allows me to continue making videos like this. So thank you, and thanks to Harry's for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the recap. In Season 2 of Prison Break, the escapees, known as the Fox River Eights, go their separate ways to avoid their pursuers. Michael and Lincoln stick together, intending on breaking Lincoln's son LJ out of prison and finding Westmoreland's money together before fleeing to Panama. Drug addict FBI agent Alexander Mahone, secretly working for the company, heads up the team in pursuit of the Fox River Eight. Although his orders from the company are not to capture, but to kill. Mahone lures a bruisey into a trap and the mob boss is gunned down by the police. Mahone also tracks down the lonely haywire and ensures his death. And the company's trail of bodies doesn't end there, as Veronica Donovan is murdered by agents of the company to ensure her silence on Stedman's survival. Meanwhile, Sarah Tancredi enters rehab to battle a drug addiction she relapsed into following her involvement in the prison break. There, she meets Agent Kellerman, who is posing as a friendly fellow addict. Kellerman is no longer allowed access to President Reynolds, and must now report to the sadistic Agent Kim. As Kellerman grows closer to Sarah, and feels guilt over over the many innocent lives he has been forced to take throughout his career, the agent becomes disillusioned with the company. After wavering on Kim's orders to murder Sarah, Kellerman is disavowed by the company. Meanwhile, Sarah's father, Governor Frank Tancredi, begins looking into Lincoln Burroughs' case and realizes that not all is as it seems. After he discovers a recording confirming that Stedman is still alive and President Reynolds is involved in the scheme, the company murder him. Frank leaves a mysterious key for his daughter, though Sarah has no knowledge of what the key unlocks. Sucre reunites with his girlfriend Mary Cruz, and C-Note reunites with his wife and daughter. But both men realize their families would be safer without them, and so Sucre and T-Note rejoin Michael and Lincoln in their quest to find Westmoreland's money, discovered to be buried underneath a newly built town. After forcing a veterinarian to reattach his chopped off hand, T-Bag joins Tweener in forcing their way back into my Michael's crew to obtain the money. Also after the money is Brad Bellick, who is fired from Fox River due to his handling of the prison escape. He decides to hunt the escapees for the reward money and steal Westmoreland's fortune for himself. As the crew finally acquire the cash, Mahone uncovers their plan and captures Tweener, murdering him in cold blood. Before Mahone or Bellick can reach the others, Teabag steals all of the money for himself and flees. Bellick and fellow prison guard Geary find and capture Teabag and torture him for the money. Geary then betrays Bellick and steals the money for himself. Teabag is forced to cut his hand off once again to escape, then tracks down Geary and murders him, framing Bellick as the culprit. Bellick is then arrested and imprisoned in Fox River, but Mahone ensures his release to help him track down the remaining escapees. As the team has once again gone their separate ways, Lincoln rescues LJ and reunites with his father Aldo. Aldo sends LJ to live secretly and safely with an associate, before reuniting with his other son Michael. But that reunion is short-lived, as Agent Mahone arrives and apprehends Michael and Lincoln and kills Aldo. Fortunately, Kellerman arrives, shooting Mahone and saving the brothers. Although Michael and Lincoln distrust the former company agent, Kellerman proves his allegiance by helping them find and capture the alive and well Stedman. The trio plan on exposing Stedman's survival to the public, but before they get the chance, Stedman dies to protect the company.
Michael, Lincoln, and Kellerman then reunite with Sarah Tancredi, and Kellerman reveals he knows where to use the deceased Frank's key. The group uses the key to obtain the recording of Stedman and President Reynolds, which reveals an incestuous relationship between the brother and sister. Michael and Lincoln attempt to use the tape to blackmail Reynolds into pardoning the brothers, but she instead resigns as president, ruining the brothers' plan. Sarah is arrested for aiding Michael and Lincoln, but during her trial, Kellerman arrives to publicly expose the company and the innumerable heinous acts he committed in their employ. Kellerman's testimony ensures both Sarah's release and Lincoln's exoneration. For his actions, Kellerman is arrested, but while being transported to prison, the company assassinates him. As the brothers intend to flee to Panama with Sarah, Mahone becomes even more desperate to stop them. The corrupt FBI agent has been forced to work for the company, as they are threatening his family and blackmailing him over illegally murdering a serial killer. When C-Note is once again captured by the police, he cuts a deal with the FBI to inform on the corrupt Mahone in exchange for his release and his family being placed in witness protection. Now a wanted man, Mahone pursues Michael and Lincoln to Panama to avoid the company's further wrath. T-Bag also finds himself in Panama, and Bellick follows him there in an attempt to steal Westmoreland's money. Bellick and T-Bag are arrested by the Panamanian police, while Michael successfully steals back the money for himself. Mahone captures Lincoln and attempts to trade him to Michael for the money. Fortunately, Michael is once again one step ahead of the corrupt agent, planting drugs on his getaway boat and ensuring his arrest. As Michael, Lincoln, and Sarah are finally ready to be free of their pursuers, Agent Kim arrives to confront them. Sarah kills Kim, drawing the attention of the Panamanian police. Michael takes the fall for Kim's murder and is arrested. As the season comes to a close, Michael Schofield finds himself imprisoned in Panama's Sona Federal Penitentiary alongside Teabag, Bellick, and Mahone. In Season 3 of Prison Break, Michael Schofield learns that Sona is a much more complicated prison than Fox River. The guards have completely abandoned the prison, only guarding the outside. On the inside, the prisoners are in charge, and drug lord Lechero St. John and his gang have imparted their own rules and moral codes. While on the inside, Mahone begins suffering from drug withdrawals, Bellick is forced into thankless janitorial work, and Teabag manipulates his way into becoming one of Lechero's most trusted allies. Outside of Sona, Lincoln Burroughs is confronted by company agent Gretchen Morgan, who explains that Sarah and LJ have been kidnapped and will be executed if Michael Schofield doesn't find and break a prisoner named James Whistler out of Sona. Whistler killed the Panamanian mayor's son in a bar fight, leading the mayor to place a bounty on his head in prison, forcing Whistler to hide in the prison's walls for protection. Lincoln teams up with Sucre and Whistler's girlfriend Sophia on the outside to assist Michael in his next prison break. Unfortunately, Gretchen proves her threats to be serious by delivering to Lincoln the head of Sarah Tancredi. Inside Sona, the prisoners begin to revolt against Lechero after issues with their water and power supply. Michael helps Lechero resolve these issues, earning the drug lord's trust and favor. Lechero mandates Whistler's safety amongst the other prisoners, allowing him to walk freely throughout the prison and assist Michael in the escape plan. Also working alongside Michael is the teenage McGrady and Agent Alex Mahone, who forms an uneasy alliance with his former target. Michael learns that the company wants Whistler out of Sona to obtain key information from a bird guidebook he kept on his person at all times. As Michael's plan causes disruption amongst Sona and its prisoners, Lechero's rule is constantly undermined, causing his people to revolt against his leadership. In turn, Lechero forces Michael to bring him into the escape plan. Also forcing their way into the escape plan are Teabag and Bellick. As the team enact their escape plan, things immediately begin to fall apart, giving the men only 30 seconds to escape. Lechero, Teabag, and Bellick greedily force themselves out of the prison first, but this was all a part of Michael's plan. The three villains are caught by Sona's guards, serving as a distraction for Michael, Whistler, Mahone, and McGrady to successfully escape. McGrady reunites with his father, and they flee to Columbia to reunite with the rest of their family. Michael reunites with Lincoln, and the brothers prepare to trade Whistler to Gretchen Morgan. During the trade, LJ is returned safely to his father, while Whistler is revealed to work for the company. Sophia feels betrayed by her boyfriend, and abandons him to be with Lincoln. Back inside Sona, Sucre is arrested and imprisoned for his part in Michael's escape plan. Teabag finds Whistler's bird book, which he lost in the escape, and 
and then murders Lechero, taking over as the new leader of the prison. Back outside the prison, Mahone aligns himself with Whistler and his mysterious company plan. While Michael Schofield decides to stop running and instead hunt down Gretchen, take down the company, and avenge his love, Sarah Tancredi. In Season 4 of Prison Break, Lincoln Burroughs is living a life in peace in Panama with LJ and Sophia, while Michael Schofield is continuing his quest to take down the company. He confronts Gretchen Morgan, who reveals that Sarah Tancredi is actually still alive. Michael then discovers that Whistler and Mahone are actually working together to take down the company, stealing an electronic card known as Scylla that contains every detail about the villainous organization and its employees. In addition to holding the secret to infinite energy, the company's leader, General Jonathan Krantz, tasks his henchman Wyatt to murder Whistler and steal back Scylla. And for his involvement in the heist, Mahone learns that Wyatt has also killed his young son. After reuniting with Sarah, Michael is recruited by Homeland Security agent Donald Self to recover Scylla and take down the company. Self also recruits Mahone, who is grieving his son, Lincoln, who wants to support his brother, and Sucre and Bellic, who escaped Sona after a riot burned the entire prison to the ground. Self offers each of the men full pardons for their various crimes, should their mission end in success. Success. While attempting to steal Scylla, Self's team discovers that the device is actually six unique electronic cards, each held by a different member of the company. This greatly complicates the team's heist plans, which are made even more difficult as Wyatt continues to hunt them down. But Wyatt isn't the only hunter, as Mahone seeks revenge for his son's death, eventually apprehending the company henchman and killing him. After obtaining five of the six Scylla cards, the team realizes that the final card belongs belongs to the general himself, and the cards can only be decoded using a device inside company headquarters. For her various failures in protecting the company from Michael's schemes, Gretchen is apprehended and tortured by her employers. Gretchen eventually escapes her captors and reunites with her daughter and sister, realizing that her former employers at the company must be stopped. Meanwhile, Teabag returns to America and uses Whistler's Bird Book to assume his secret identity of Cole Pfeiffer, taking a job at a company known as Gate that was detailed in the book. Gretchen forms an alliance with Teabag, and after crossing paths, with Self's team, Michael realizes that the gate offices are actually connected to the company headquarters. And so, Michael and his allies are forced to reluctantly work with Gretchen and Teabag in their quest to bring down the company. While attempting to tunnel from underneath gate into the company headquarters, a waterline breaks and Bellic sacrifices his own life to save the rest of the team. Thanks in large part to Bellic's sacrifice, the team successfully breaks into the company's headquarters and completes Scylla. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, they are betrayed by Agent Self, who aligns with Teabag and Gretchen and reveals his plan to sell Scylla and live lavishly off his newfound riches. Self botches the sale of Scylla, having it stolen by the prospective mystery buyer, while Gretchen is shot and arrested. As Michael and his allies then focus on recovering Scylla, Michael also begins suffering from the same type of brain tumor that killed his mother. Fearing for his brother's life, Lincoln makes a deal with the general to deliver Scylla in exchange for the company providing Michael with a life-saving surgery. And so, although Lincoln saves his brother's life, he is also forced to betray him, becoming an agent of the company and working alongside the traitorous self and teabag. After recovering from his surgery, Michael learns that his mother Christina is also still alive and working as a member of the company, and is in fact the new buyer of Scylla. Christina plans on taking down Krantz and reforming the company from the inside, and is ruthless in her methods. Lincoln's team continue working for the general to steal Scylla from Christina, while Michael's team attempt to steal it to bring down the entire company for good. Ultimately, the brothers reconcile their differences and align to steal back Scylla and take down the company. Michael and his allies manage to obtain Scylla, intending to destroy it to keep its power out of the company's hands. But before they can, Agent Kellerman arrives, revealing to have been saved from certain death by men loyal to Aldo Burroughs. Kellerman negotiates a trade of Scylla in exchange for full immunity for Michael Lincoln, Sarah Sucre, and Mahone. Although Teabag is also offered immunity, the rest of the team vote to send him back to Fox River where he belongs. 
Meanwhile, Self is apprehended by the authorities and left paralyzed by an injection from Christina. After being attacked by Christina, Sarah murders her, while Michael decides to spare the general's life to instead be arrested and officially sentenced to the death penalty. As Michael and the pregnant Sarah Tancredi prepare to return to a normal life together, even getting married in front of their closest friends, Sarah is arrested for the murder of Christina Schofield and imprisoned alongside Gretchen Morgan. Michael, Lincoln, Sucre, and Mahone then enact a plan to break Sarah out of prison, though Michael sacrifices himself in the process. Sarah and Lincoln then flee to live peacefully in the Dominican Republic, honoring Michael's memory and promising to look out for each other as family. In Season 5 of Prison Break, seven years have passed and Teabag is shocked that a mystery man named Canyon Aldis has orchestrated his release from Fox River, leaving him with a photo that appears to show Michael Schofield still alive and incarcerated in a prison known as Ojigia in Yemen. Canyon Aldis also arranges for Teabag to have a surgery, giving him a fully working prosthetic hand. Teabag brings the photo of Michael to Lincoln, who becomes determined to find his missing brother. Lincoln travels to Yemen with C-Note, where they discover that Michael is in fact alive and is also the mysterious Canyon Aldis. Meanwhile, Sarah Tancredi learns of her deceased husband's survival. Sarah is raising her and Michael's young son, Mike, and has married a man named Jacob Ness. As Sarah does her own investigation into Michael's reappearance, she is hunted by two agents, A&W and Van Gogh, who work for the villainous Poseidon, a mysterious figure who has orchestrated Michael's latest imprisonment and framed him for the murder of CIA director Harlan Gaines. Poseidon was behind Sarah's arrest, leading Michael and fellow Ojigia prisoner Whip being forced to work for Poseidon for the past several years, breaking out prisoners across Colombia and Egypt. And now, their latest mission is to break out Abu Ramal, a leader in the terrorist group ISIL. With the help of Kellerman, Sarah discovers that Poseidon is a rogue CIA operative trying to orchestrate their own nefarious plans, who eventually murders Kellerman to ensure his silence. In Yemen, Lincoln and C-Note work together on the outside to help Michael's latest prison break attempt. Inside the prison, Michael and Whip team up with fellow inmates Sid and Ja in their attempt to escape. Although Michael at first tries to leave the terrorist Ramal behind, he is eventually forced to allow the ISIL leader to join their escape. Outside the prison, the group are captured by ISIL and Ramal plans on beheading Michael for his betrayal. Luckily, Lincoln Burroughs arrives to help his brother, attacking the jihadists while Whip kills Ramal. Michael and Lincoln share an emotional reunion before fleeing with their allies, now all targets of ISIL. While attempting to escape Yemen, Sid is killed by the pursuing ISIL forces. C-Note is forced to leave behind his friends, who can't make it to their planned plane escape in time. Ja parts ways with his allies, while Michael, Lincoln, and Whip search for a new way out of Yemen. When Michael is attacked and stabbed by a poison blade, Sarah travels to Greece to reunite with her lost love and save his life. Michael warns Sarah that her new husband Jacob is in fact the villainous Poseidon. Sarah races back to America to protect her son Mike, who is captured by Jacob and his operatives. Meanwhile, Michael, Lincoln, and Whip are rescued by Sucre, who helps them find passage on a cargo ship out of the country. The group return to America, where Michael's new mission is to take down Jacob and save his family. Michael sends Whip to meet with Teabag, where the two discover that they are actually father and son. Indebted to Michael for uniting him with the son he never knew he had, Teabag joins the fight to take down Jacob. Jacob's operative Van Gogh begins to have second thoughts on his boss's villainous schemes and is in turn killed by a and w. Everything comes to a head inside a massive warehouse where Michael and his allies lure Jacob and a and w. When a and w kills Whip, Teabag murders a and w and mourns his newfound son. Michael then flees from Jacob, who then shoots him in the back. But this is all a part of Michael's plan. As Jacob realizes this warehouse is a recreation of the site of CIA director Harley Harlan Gaines' murder, and Michael has just recreated the assassination on camera to frame Jacob for the murder he had actually committed. Jacob and Teabag are both arrested and sent to Fox River, where Teabag gets his violent revenge for Whip's death. With Poseidon taken down, Michael's name is cleared once again, allowing him to reunite with Sarah and raise his son in peace.